Hi, welcome back to Lipper's Fun Flows Insight Report. I'm Jeff Turnahoy. For the weekend of November 11th, 2015, the conventional mutual funds industry saw fairly tepid demand and outflow activity as investors kind of sat on their hands trying to figure out what the Fed will do next. Let's take a look at our macro groups and see where the activity was. As you can see here, equity funds, while an outflow of $1.7 billion is certainly not enough to write home about, taxable bond funds didn't fare much better. They had outflows approaching $900 million. Municipal debt funds managed to scrape together a couple hundred million dollars in net inflows this week, and money market funds were the big winner, taking in about $6.5 billion. Well, there wasn't a whole lot to write home about in terms of market performance this week as the Dow Jones sort of skidded to into the end of the flows week. It uh, saw um, equity mutual funds on average lose about 1.36% for one of their worst weeks in, uh, in quite a few weeks. So overall, not a whole lot of activity for investors to get excited about. Let's take a look at those equity funds and see how, uh, and, uh, how flows fared. Considering how poor the market did this week, again, you know, down over 136 basis points, we weren't surprised to see some outflows. Sort of, sort of, certainly could have been worse, though. Domestic mutual funds led the outflow parade, about $1.9 billion pulled from them, while non-domestic equity funds did manage to see about $208 million in inflows. On the whole, though, we saw you know, large cap, multi cap, mid and small lead the outflows for domestic funds. On the non-domestic side, the real story here was emerging market funds. They actually had outflows, $383 million. So the uh, volatility of emerging markets was not enough to prop up those non-domestic flows. So where did the money go? Well, we actually saw some pretty good uh, inflows to alternatives funds this week. Perhaps that has something to do with market misbehavior. Um, absolute return funds led with about $146 million in net inflow. So not a terrific week for equity funds, but we'll see how things go as we get a little more uh, uh, certain about where the Fed will be going at its December uh, Fed rate meeting. Well, let's turn our attention now to equity ETFs. They had inflows this week, about $643 million, which again, not very much. I think the overall theme this week is fairly light inflow and outflow activity in either direction. They have had five consecutive weeks of inflow, so it looks like institutions are starting to settle on equities uh, in the coming weeks. It was very product specific though when it came to inflow and outflow activity. We couldn't really put our finger on whether this was a risk off or risk on type of week. We saw industrials, utilities, and gold all lead with outflows. The big winner in this group was international multi-cap core funds with about $2 billion in inflows. As I said, much of this was very product specific. We saw IWM, the Russell 2000, take in about $1.6 billion, while two versions of the EFA, the, one, the core and the non-core, together uh, saw about $2 billion in inflows. On the other hand, Spider Gold, GLD, it saw outflows of about $583 million this week, while the industrials uh, XLI saw about $706 million in outflows. And SPY, of course, as it often does, either led or, uh, well, it certainly will lead either direction. In this case, it was leading outflows, about $1.5 billion pulled from it. Well, if we turn our attention now to taxable mutual funds, again, they had less than $900 million in outflows, but uh, in terms of performance, this is one of their worst weeks since August. Again, we saw investors of two minds when it came to certain products. For instance, HSBC's total return uh, mutual fund had outflows of about $504 million, while MetWest total return fund had inflows of $197 million. So go figure. Overall, though, we saw high yield funds fare pretty poorly this week. They saw outflows of about $543 million. Uh, that was worse than loan funds, which had outflows of $214 million. It's been a long time since loan funds have had a, any sort of inflow momentum. On the upside, we did see core plus funds lead with inflows, about $342 million put into them. Well, their uh, cousins on the taxable fixed income ETF side also saw outflows this week. Quite a bit more though, about $2.8 billion pulled from them. We saw the iShares AGG, the aggregate, with about $1.3 billion in inflows, and then it dropped off pretty solidly after that. Overall, we saw treasury-type products with outflows, core-type products with inflows. 
High yield funds, much like mutual funds, didn't do very well. They saw about $1.3 billion in outflows, of which JNK was about $1.2 billion. So read what you can out of that. Uh, the next group to take a look at is uh, municipal debt funds, mostly uh, mutual funds here. In fact, all of this activity this week is in mutual funds. They had $229 million in inflows, but their performance, about uh, 37 basis points to the bad, was their worst week since February. So despite a poor week in the markets, we still saw investors able to scrape together a couple of nickels to throw at their municipal debt funds. High yield municipal debt funds, uh, they had saw about $43 million in inflows, so not exactly rushing for volatility here. Intermediate muni debt funds was the week's real winner, about $87 million pushed into them. While short municipal debt funds, maybe this is investors getting a little more confident, they saw outflows of about $37 million, and they led the way out. So overall, a pretty good and supportive week for municipal debt funds. The last group to look at is money market funds. Again, about $6.5 billion in net inflows. We can slice and dice this a couple of ways. On the one hand, retail investors were responsible for pulling about $4.8 billion from their cash accounts this week, while institutions added $11.3 billion. Read differently, tax-exempt money market funds had outflows of just over $350 million this week, while prime money market funds saw inflows of $7.2 billion, and government and treasury products also saw inflows about $3.9 billion this week. Well, that'll wrap it up for this week's flows activity. Join us next week where we'll review goings on in the ETF and mutual fund communities, or join us online at lipperusfundflows.com for more information. Thanks for watching.